Hey, I wanted to do a video on um, something a little spooky. So, religion-wise, I believe the universe is alive, right? And we are, depending on our state of consciousness, um, experiencing that life right and depending on our state of consciousness um that life m may experience us you know it's uh the whole duality non-duality i'm not gonna get into it but um socially from like a religious cultural perspective I was raised all Protestant, Episcopalian, um, converted to Buddhism uh, about 15 years ago. Uh, with a convert zeal, I practiced uh, religiously, you know, no pun intended. I meditated at least once a week for, you know, five years, um, oftentimes every day. Uh, and I did find it very helpful when I was incarcerated as something to do. And I got oh, actually much better at it when I was in jail than I did when I was um, going to a, a Buddhist temple. But, um, you know, I've, I've since start, I've, I've started eating meat again. I'm not a vegetarian anymore. Um, I'm not going to a temple anymore. I, periodically practice but I I more I find myself more and more looking towards like biomedical solutions um to activate the same pathways the same mechanisms uh, that are activated during meditation right so I think that's the direction that I'm kind of headed which isn't you know it's more like practicing Kung Fu or um, body meditation in your daily life by generating a lifestyle, you know, but it's just, we live in a modern world where that technology exists, so to be aware of it and to use it, you know, and to try to be mindful in that use, I think is, is in line with the practice, at least the spirit of it, you know, the stuff wasn't around when the Buddha was around, um, he might have oxygen machines and you know, hydrogen generators and, you know, be amazed by the uh, structure of water and all that stuff too. I, would, I certainly, I certainly am. Um, but I have a little bit of a optimistic, not optimistic theory. So, a while ago, there was a, um, a plan from NASA to drill into the aquifer on the west side of the supervolcano at Yellowstone. And the intention was to extract heat from the, uh, in the form of steam to extract heat in the hopes of uh, venting off that energy and preventing an eruption. Right? So, right now there's uh, an eruption going on in Iceland. And this is where it's a little bit like spooky, maybe. It's not optimistic, but we're all, you know, on. Um, kind of the edge of our seats as a society, as a world, with this like crescendo of tragedy and drama and war and disease and natural disasters and wildfires. It's it's been a crescendo for at least again viewing it through the lens of the media 
Rome for the past couple of years. And people are working less. And when people are working less, you would be crazy to be optimistic. You know, you can say automation will save us. I understand the logistics behind building a robot and it takes a lot of work to build a robot and I just don't see it getting done. It's just, you know what I mean? And maybe people in China are seeing different things. I'm sure people in Japan are seeing different things. But here where I am locally, there's not much reason to be optimistic because not many people are working to make you feel optimistic. You know what I mean? So, you know, whatever, to, to make an apple pie. It takes a thousand steps. So you got no reason to expect an apple pie if you don't see any of those steps getting done. <laughs> right? So there's not I don't I don't see any of the, the precursor steps to any great grand projects. So I don't expect any great grand projects. Do you understand? My my well kind of mental state is based on that observation. Right? But, obviously, so NASA had this plan to vent this seemingly imminent disaster. And, didn't get done, right? But I was thinking, right? So, it, where did they do it? And they weren't just going to vent the steam. They were going to build a bunch of geothermal steam plants. So... When you drill down into the ground, you are first, you know, displacing soil um, and compacting it. Uh, but as you extract energy and water vapor, um, you are going to inevitably soften the, the soil and it, potentially very deep down you're going to be softening the soil. Um, and that's exactly what they did in Iceland. And um, now Iceland is seeing this this, oh, this, this volcano. I, I don't think it's related directly. This volcano, per se, is related directly to uh, their geothermal wells. In fact, I know it's not because it's not near a geothermal well. Um, I think that they were undoubtedly picked in, in very wise locations from a geological perspective to avoid that sort of risk. Um, but what I do think is that maybe that provided a, a uh, increased venting pathway that drove a, a flow of magma that um might be something bigger right so i have i'm a pessimist maybe a, a negative outlook on the future uh i don't think it's irrational it's just i don't i don't like it about myself but i think it's kind of why i'm still alive too I think that if I had this like sunny outlook um, about what's going to happen, um, I probably wouldn't be alive today. So I, I wish I didn't, but I think it, I think it was learned. But maybe I'm making excuses. I don't know. But you know, I think that there there is a potential for a um, a super volcano to happen at any time, you know, geologically speaking, we're overdue here. Now, if you go and look it up online now, it wasn't like it was five years ago. Five years ago, it was, these things are regular intervals. Um, they move, you can kind of see the underlying vent pocket over the crust as the each um, super, 
you know, succeeding uh, super volcano moves slightly. You can see the uh, the crater's path essentially, um, and they're highly anticipated. Now, if you go and look online, it says it might not ever happen again. So, I think that's a little bit of. Uh, optimistic <laughs> scientific theory that is probably not uh, rooted in reality right I think that that's delusional thinking to say that there's never going to be a super volcano again you know even there might not be might might be like zero 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 one percent there might not ever be another super volcano <laughs> But the vast uh, probable, probabilistic certainty, the odds are vastly in the favor of, I should speak like a freaking American, I am, you know, uh, the, uh, the vast, the better odds are on by a vast majority, there being a super volcano, and quite frankly, the, there being one relatively soon, because if you look at the numbers, we're way overdue. Now, I don't think that Yellowstone Observatory tells us everything, um, and I also think that there's a good reason that they don't have their people at Yellowstone. It's all done uh, remotely. I think that they're very aware of the imminent nature of the threat. But I think that there's a possibility that it might not be the first in a series of large eruptions. And a part of that might be um, the use of geothermal energy. Now this is way out there because I don't want to put, it's actually a technology I'm really in favor of. And if you have the ability to harvest uh, geothermal energy and cool a known risk of a volcano down and use that energy to power your houses in a carbon free way that's that's brilliant but i th also think that you know slight edge theory every everything can kind of tip the scales a little bit here a little bit there now when you're talking about super volcanoes it's it would be like the difference between being first and being second in a series of um, extinction, near extinction level events that precede probably, a, a, you know, the earth flipping on its axis, you know, some crazy stuff because mountains don't come from nowhere and, you know, continents don't reshape themselves. These things do happen, but, um, you know, it's possible that they drilled enough holes in the bedrock to uh, to take the first hit. I don't know. I'm very um, nervous about that um, because there's nothing we can do.